Hello and welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the it's best podcast boy. show in the world, in the Rooftop Ohio. Pod. Ohio. The Rooftop Pod. Have we? Rachel has arrived. Yay. Wow, well, that was probably extraordinarily, extraordinarily obnoxious. Oh, that's a competitor. We got to toss that to the side. No. We got to toss that to the side. Hey, why would you not wish Um, yeah, so we are concluding our trip back home. All of us are leaving today except for Andrew. Andrew's going to stay yep. here a couple more days. What are you going to do while we're gone, right, Andrew? It's literally for one night. I'm going to sleep. I'm going to wake up and then I'm going to go to the Where airport. You? Oh, you leave Sunday? Uh, I can schedule a pickup. I just want to see how much it costs. Uh, oh. Can dad not take you? Oh, church? He's a, Andrew's he's got a church money. Man. Church man. Oh, no, Ooh. I'm not scheduling that. We're just going to call it live. Oh, gosh. That was like 60 bucks. Yeah. Only? But it's cheaper if I schedule it live. Um, How about we just like chat for a little bit and then we can record and advertise them into okay okay what are we chatting about mm. excited Very to go good. back to college rachel no yes no yes yes <laughs> yeah. yeah 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 that's really I, interesting i was all oh, hold up hold up you're going to your senior year. Mm -hmm. Oh, I was so excited to go back to my senior year of college. Senior year is the best year. Yeah. I know. I think I'm scared because I'm in a mood to play, right? Like, I just, all I want to do senior year is play. That's and what that's senior what you year can is do. For. But the thing is, There's most of my nothing friends, to play. Most of my friends, that <laughs> and most of my friends are pre meds. So, like, they're still taking things very seriously. Yeah, but they're not, Serious. they're like a different breed of pre med than you. Like they Wait, take their coursework very seriously. Does it seriously. matter? What? Once they're I applying to meds. Oh boy, hold on, hold on. Yeah, they're applying, which is stressful. That's true. Yeah, I guess and your then still they're matter. still. Yeah. Oh, so they're not taking gap years. Yeah. See, this mm -hmm. is. I highly encourage people to take gap year between undergrad and med school because applying during your senior year does kind of steal away your senior year experience because you're stressed and you're interviewing and you don't really have that much time to kind of relax and just enjoy senior year for what it is. Gap years are good. I highly encourage gap years. Close the door. Oh, wait, it's wait. John and Philip. Oh, I was like, who's <laughs> We're getting robbed. <laughs> no, um, I think, well, okay, I'm sure other people will want to play with me. I just need to like suss out the vibes first, you know? Like, mm. I don't know who wants to play. That's but true. once I get back, I'm gonna be like, who wants to play? <laughs> mm. And then we're all gonna go play. <laughs> go where and play. <laughs> yeah what's what's the vibe the in vibes terms of, yeah this year is house parties oh i think i'm done with okay. bars okay i think okay. i'm sick and tired of bad music but the mm -hmm. thing is i don't know if everyone else likes the same music that i do so i don't know if i'm just gonna be playing to my own audience of me oh are Rachel's you gonna, gonna get into djing i yeah. love uh, DJing. no we have a great like my okay, house okay, is great okay, for okay. hosting we've hosted before Word. all of my roommates have been like oh my gosh we should definitely host more mm. and i'm like this is my year of play i will host i will absolutely host hosting is really fun but it gets kind of stressful because yeah. i hosted a lot um at my place and Same. you have as well mm -hmm. and it sounds like you're about to it's stressful in the sense that you want to make sure everyone's having fun mm -hmm. yeah and if you notice some people not having fun i get or when i notice some people not having fun i get stressed i'm like what can i do to I think like if you're behind like the dj controller mm -hmm. though that's true you, you just have vibe into your yeah. own music but the thing is i feel bad because i want to have conversations with everybody yeah. and as a host you can't really do that i yeah. just want to vibe that's the only thing yeah. like when you're yeah. you're <laughs> djing and you're also hosting simultaneously that's it's very hard to entertain the crowd outside of playing music so like yeah, what you can fair. do is you can make it interactive and take requests i actually love taking requests because then hmm. you can get that's a hot take as a DJ. That is a hot no, take. I love taking requests because what they request is exactly what they want to hear. Yeah, so like their true. energy gets going. Yeah. Of course you have to like down the music. You have to the library. No, that's not that hard to do. Oh. Okay, I think yeah. the hardest thing is like trying to balance 
like just pleasing very small mm-hmm. groups mm-hmm. or very with the general isolated yeah. groups or like pleasing like the entire crowd and that's i think that's the biggest learning curve of djing is knowing how to please the crowd and not just like a specific group if you know yeah. what i mean that's yeah fair. i don't know no, if i'm that good at it yet i don't know i don't think i would get into djing for that purpose like mm. i would do it for my own enjoyment <laughs> if you I mean, don't that... like my music <laughs> sucks to get suck. out <laughs> no i mean djing for yourself is also fun but like if you're hosting obviously you want yeah. to and yeah. I, I think djing is a great way to expand your taste of music because mm. i started listening to a lot more genres of music because i get requests and i'm like oh this is actually kind of hype. I'm going to play more music from this genre um, and learn more about this this like new genre of music. So my my music taste is even more eclectic now. Dude, I kind of like country music now. Yeah, I've been having a country playlist on last I, I always had a deep disdain <laughs> against country music and I I didn't I couldn't really right wrap up. my head yeah. around why. <laughs> But I think the music itself is actually good. I hate the culture surrounding country music. I don't think the music itself is good. <laughs> Dude, let me play you some No, don't bops. please. No. Wait, wait, wait country why? country or like away. pop country? There's this guy that, well, Arjun Luke told me. Brian. No, not Morgan Brian. Wallace. Luke Combs. No, Chris Stapleton. Oh, my God. <laughs> he has a song. I, think I just... Tennessee whiskey, but he also has this. Oh, song. I like Tennessee song. whiskey. This is a good song too. You should probably leave. It sounds like John Mayer. Oh, you yeah. do like John Mayer. It's in a while. <laughs> Rachel's like, <laughs> stop this immediately. <laughs> I think I associate music with vibes. So if I don't like the vibe, I don't like the music. What's but the vibe is for most country music, it's just peaceful. Like you're sitting on your front porch, overlooking your corn, drinking a fire. beer. I mean, not with necessarily, your cowboy yeah. hat and cowboy boots, and looking at your Fish. sprawl. <laughs> land. So you actually don't enjoy like the musical aspect of country music. You don't like the country. Not twang. really. I kind of like. I like folk music, which I guess it's, is a sister to a country taste, music. Yeah. yeah, but there's uh, no twang. But it's it's still like the simplicity, the like sing. oh, I love the ma- mountains. I love like going through the I love whatever, God whatever. Oh, hmm. and Jesus. Yeah, that too. Um, Rachel, you are very particular with your music. Mm. I am. You don't like pop. I don't like pop. You don't like Dua Lipa, Doja Cat. I like Doja. Doja's. Uh, she is the queen of she's pop been at the popified. moment. What was her music before? It was all super Mu. poppy. <laughs> 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 and that Taco Bell song. Oh, milkshake! Mexican, no. Mexican pizza. She made a, she made oh a whole gosh. song about Mexican pizza. Yeah, I, I love her. One. See, like I love her vibe. Therefore, I love her music. Mm. Uh, I see, I see, okay, I see. yeah. So it's similar to me where I don't really enjoy the, or my immediate aversion to country music is the, the culture surrounding it, and the culture is born from like the people who make the music, right? So. So it's similar i don't know i don't think i can be sold on country music really yeah wow. so it's not it's not like the instruments you don't mind like a banjo you don't mind yeah like i don't mind tambourines yeah okay it's just, well, well, is it like the pop, lyrics probably don't like pop country i feel like pop. it's the voice hmm. pop about, is different pop Musgraves? is like too <laughs> 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 naming hella specific artists. <laughs> Tennessee whiskey. Let me, let me pull my country. I do it. like Tennessee whiskey. I used to say I liked everything. I, I really did not like everything. I think I. <laughs> I, really I my go to thing to say before was I like everything except for country. But then I, now I say That's I like so everything, generic. including country. <laughs> now well, I say R and B. I don't like hmm. metallic or scream. It like I just can't get behind that. Um, I also yeah I don't like dubstep I don't like yeah or like heavy trap I can't really do, uh, what do you consider like, time and place grids? I guess yeah I I definitely had a head bangy ish phase yeah where um I enjoyed that but I think I'm too old now for that it hurts my head 
Oh, do you guys think you like country now because you're old? <laughs> no, I've been having this country playlist since like high school. Hmm. I I like converted to semi enjoying high. Uh, I was the same way. Like sophomore freshman year of high school, I said I like everything except for country. And then something switched junior year of high school where I'm like, oh, I kind of vibe with country. And that's when my Spotify country li- playlist was born. Hmm. And then I roomed with two two dudes from Texas in college. And then we played I lived in Texas. <laughs> yeah, you lived in Texas. And I Did still you go to a country like concert? It. No, it's because I was mm. friends with a bunch of, can I say this, Mexicans? <laughs> <laughs> Why can't you say that? Oh. I mean, yeah. Yeah. So, like, they just listened to Mexican music all the time. Yeah, and it was great. That makes uh, sense. Yeah. Yeah. There Latin was a lot of music or Latin yeah, music. Also so high good. Also bangers. Real. I listened to a lot of mariachi too. Oh. Yeah. I was like, oh, I whoa, did not whoa, whoa. see myself getting we into this. We have a specific section on Andrew's ideas? Wait, wait, wait. Oh, I made that because I didn't know where to categorize my ideas. So I just put Andrew's ideas. I, I've never scrolled down. I feel like this. we need better organization for this. Yeah, no, we should put Apple this in Apple Notes is actually one of the most like advanced note taking tools I still don't like it. Really? I saw that video you saw. Oh, really? You okay. can make tags and like different know, folders. But and... like you can't make like good tables that link to other documents, which you can do that's, in that's Notion. Excel. Oh, yeah. Well, and OneNote. Sure. No, you can't do no, that in OneNote. I, I really like Notion. Please sponsor us. I love <laughs> Notion too. Ooh, okay. I like this because Andrew and I were talking about this, but mm. I'm going to a wedding next weekend. Uh, it's one of my high school friends. Mm. Um, and a lot of our high school friend group is going because like when you invite one high school friend You kind of have to invite all of them like the entire friend group, right? Because I'm not I'm not super close with this guy um, I mean, I love him, but we like text maybe once every couple years kind of thing Like I don't keep in close contact. Mm. So I was kind of surprised when I got the wedding invite from him I, But at the same time, I wasn't that surprised because then I realized our whole entire high school friend group got an invite um, and I'm thinking about like when I get married, cause it'll be like multiple years from now. I feel like we've talked about this. We have? Yeah. Whether we want it like a big wedding or a small no, 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 no. Oh. I'm wondering like, because he invited me, do I have to invite oh. him to my wedding kind of thing? I don't think so. Cause I think that's the common courtesy thing to do because weddings yeah. cost a lot. And obviously like them inviting you is they're spending money to basically have you there. So like it's common courtesy for you to kind of invite them back to your wedding. I think time frame matters. If you were going to get married later this year or mm-hmm. like beginning of next year or even next year in general, I think common courtesy would be, yeah, you yeah. should invite him. But I don't plan on doing that. So yeah. And then, I mean, that's the thing. Like in three, five years, you, I think it's fair to reevaluate then. But it, I think it also depends on what type of wedding you have. If you have like a really small, intimate, yeah. personal wedding, then... It's understandable. Uh, it's very understandable. Yeah. But part of me does, like, I kind of, I alternate back and forth between this, like having a small intimate wedding or having just like a banger when I have like a era's reunion tour of my life. And I just oh, invite wow. every like friend group from like each past. era of your life. Yeah. Because like at Andrew one point Zahn, we the Eras tour. Eras tour <laughs> wedding edition. But I think that'd be really cool to see like a bunch of worlds like coalesce mm. at a wedding. Because I was close with all these people at one point in my life. Mm-hmm. So like these people did have an impact. They know you at different points. Um, yeah. yeah. But that requires a lot of money. Yes, that is very expensive. I yeah. feel like with the trajectory that you're on. So thanks for listening to the podcast. <laughs> podcast is funding our future no please sponsor us <laughs> does notion sponsor influencers oh a ton of influencers oh, Most of YouTube, though. no sponsor kate oh yeah i think so do you feel mm. like well i guess it seems like you guys are not under the impression that you have to invite someone that invited you i think you re-eval well it depends like i said time, time frame, frame. and time frame also matters yeah mm. circumstances when you yeah. do get married I, I feel like if you don't want to invite your entire high school friend group, I don't. That's fair. Yeah, I barely that's talk fair. to any of them. Yeah. I talked to like two of them. So it'd be them. weird if you only invited him because he invited you to his yeah, wedding and exactly. then didn't invite anyone. So else you had the two the people you talked to. And then the, <laughs> I wouldn't mind yeah. him being there. Like he's a great guy, oh, super yeah. fun. It's just that my, I think my rule when I do come up with like a list of people to invite, it'll be if you haven't initiated a text or a call in the past five years you're not getting invited or maybe in the past three years 
depends on where i am in life yeah i feel like that's and how fair. big of a wedding like that'll be my cutoff like if that person had not initiated a conversation with me in the past like several years then like i don't think we're close enough to justify having you at my wedding that's fair yeah it's really interesting because i think in asian culture ah, maybe this is pan cultural but um when it comes to wedding invites especially if your parents are helping you pay there's an expectation that your parents are allowed to also invite mm. guests that mm. you wouldn't have otherwise invited like their friends do you think mom and dad would invite a lot of their family friends to our wedding it, I they actually don't strike don't, me as they don't strike us me as the type that would I think so. yeah because if they did they would have to invite like the entire church which, which absolutely is not, yeah. not happening yeah, yeah. Um, there's not like do you think we would out of courtesy for mom and dad like having a good time invite some of their friends though like mm. their friends who have children that are our ages that we might not be they're super close to they're oh that we're not super close to yeah, yeah. interesting hmm. Hmm. i would i think mom and dad are friends with enough of my friends parents where if i invite invite my friends and their parents they would have like a social circle to hang out with. Wow, that'd be a crazy, not large, but like, man. Because if you invite friends, that's another plus two, plus or plus one. That's like four people per like friend if you invite their parents too. Not for everybody's parents, but like those those spots fill up quick. Or or just like immediate re- like relatives, like aunts and uncles. They don't. Oh, really, yeah, we don't true. really need to invite their friends because the yeah. the idea is when parents invite their friends it's like they had a hand in like raising you they're wow. like the people yeah. who are yeah. like yeah. oh i remember when you were this young like i changed mm. your diapers and now yeah. they feel like they could be at your wedding oh wouldn't you just invite them yourself then but like you're not oh, like would you the invite? only experience that you have with them was when you were a baby like oh okay. mm. you never stay close with them afterwards but would they're you your parents friends. extended family i would how I mean, is how aunt aunt extended is yeah. it yeah. extended like one degree like yeah immediately related to mom and dad mm. but i mean our uncle who lives in the u.s had a yeah, exactly. huge hand I, I mean say. yes he's yeah. obviously yeah. i yeah. assume you count yeah, him yeah. as yeah, yeah. yeah i think any of our family in the u.s yeah. would be invited mm. would you have a wedding in the u.s and then also a wedding in china I feel like maybe or a ceremony of some sort yeah, i feel like I feel our grandparents like, would appreciate yeah, would that want this is with the assumption that you're is this with the assumption that your partner is also Chinese? No. no. I think it'd be I don't cool think, I think regardless. I wouldn't have like a wedding, but I'd like like to fly back with my then spouse to China to see Ye Ye Nai Nai and the rest of the Jan mm. Jet Swin. Or maybe they'll be like, don't come until you have a child. <laughs> come back when you have a child. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't... For some more context, I called... Uh, my grandparents last night and so I heard. the only thing that they said to me was you need to extend your family Chenja. uh i, I think that's what they extend is i the, think Chenja is, is more like Chen- establish a family. Oh, is that what okay yeah, yeah yeah um and i was like okay can you help me find somebody then it's not easy out here in the u.s i love that they're also they're splitting the responsibility between me and you now no it's not man. just me it's, uh they seem getting old and they're they just s- like hmm. do they say anything to you rachel no i'm so oh, young yeah. i'm still in college well, yeah but i think grandma probably got married around yeah but that age. was a different time yeah, my they guy. still live that in that time that was such a different time i think they understand how culture has changed really I not think enough so. I, I mean, mean not the thing me. is, it's not even in this culture. Getting married in mid to late twenties is not abnormal. Like our friends are getting married. Yeah. Mid to late, yes, mid to late yeah. for sure. That's but, where but we're Rachel's at. early twenties. I know. Exactly, yeah, which, which is, is why, why they're, they're not, not getting pressured. pressured. Uh, oh, I see yeah, what you're yeah, saying. Yeah. I see what you're saying. Okay. Yeah. 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 I know. I love, it. I love that i don't get any of this they're just like oh you've grown up so well you look so pretty now i'm just like oh thank you wow why don't i get any <laughs> positive <laughs> i don't get that anymore they're like you're getting old and decrepit <laughs> 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 have, have a child no, i love calling you and then i yeah mm-hmm. oh my gosh but dad was like showing me or i guess 
nine nine was holding the camera she was showing me yeah yeah like walking his back is like scoliosis like 90 yeah. degrees now wait what oh like bent forward mm-hmm. yeah it's crazy yeah. nine nine still looks great though i will she say does. Yeah. yeah they're not like that much actually how many how they're many 10 years, years apart, they're 10 years oh, yeah, apart so it's, that's uh, quite a lot it's a pretty big gap hmm. but yeah 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 oh, i'm not gonna lie I, I think i'm starting to feel what you're feeling jesse because i felt hella guilty i'm like man maybe i do need to be in a relationship and have a kid after yeah. having the call get some have some kids man i think this is the first time that because usually you're there and all the pressure falls on you yeah but because you weren't there they're were just like all right andrew you're next up at bat we can't talk to jesse right now so or have a my, child more dad was just straight up told them like andrew's more ready than jesse yeah, Dad might have said that. I don't know. Uh, he handed me the phone while I was half asleep and taking a nap. Oh, yeah. Bruh. And I was like, huh? What, what's happening? <laughs> what time is it? Time for you to have kids. <laughs> is it hot in here? Is it, just... it is hot in here. I feel oh. great. Oh, you do? Yeah. Okay. Do we want to integrate the CMB ad? Speaking and... about having kids, before no. you have kids, no, you need to like have that. a wife. And before you have a wife, <laughs> you need like to that. have a serious like relationship. So. And where you can find a serious relationship <laughs> super easily is on Coffee Meets Bagel because everything on Coffee Meets Bagel is so intentional. And everyone on Coffee Meets Bagel wants a serious relationship. Clip it, speed cut running, it, it's a wrap. Speed running your path to having kids, Coffee Meets Bagel. If you want to appease your... <laughs> this is not what i was in the east coffee meets bagel all right so i mentioned on the last podcast that we are now (laughs) starting to get sponsorships and a lot of you probably have already seen our first one with coffee meets bagel they want to extend our contract um i'm gonna leave this this ad in here he's been in the game been in the game rachel would you ever use a dating app no, I think it's just weird. But if you were to use a dating app, what if I were to use one, I would use Coffee Meets Bagel. Uh, what is sorry. your what are your reservations against using a dating app? Oh, do you want to meet I cute? Just, yeah, mm-hmm. I do want to meet cute. Oh wait, what is meet? Have cute? you described what's your what's your ideal meet cute? I was talking about what, this. What, with are, what oh, is this that's term? Cute. Meet in it's, real life. Yeah. It just like what a cute way of meeting yes. someone in real life. Just like oh, by who, chance. Meet Q? What the? Have you never it's heard a, of like this term? It's like a rom-com term. Yeah. yeah. Oh, whoa, I've never heard of that term. Wow. Meet Q. Yeah, you don't watch rom-coms, do you? I don't know. I Not feel really. like I don't, I don't like the mm. idea of someone just being attracted to me based off of an image that I put out. Mm. Um, what if you're like in a coffee shop listening to like your favorite music? I don't know how that person would pick that up. Hold up. And you have your phone open <laughs> and it has a spot of... <laughs> yeah. Hold up, hold up. I'm just saying shop. like... Because you don't really read the books in public either. comes over to you and is like, can you please turn that off? <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh uh, shit. I'm so sorry. Do you want my number? <laughs> <laughs> True love. I do uh, meet you. Because <laughs> mm. I was talking about this with a friend like yeah. to describe your perfect meet you and... Then I was like, wait a second. Mm. Do I even put myself in situations where I would be in this MeQ moment? Mm. Oh, interesting. Yeah. What if you start s- centering your life around the perfect MeQ? Like you just put yourself in situations. <laughs> I was going to say, though, I, I feel, feel like, like some people do that. Yeah. Mm. Like I really want to find somebody like, like your friend at who the just, library reading. Like your friend who just also... stands at the entrance of a Ritzia. <laughs> Oh no, I forgot my uh, wallet. Can someone pay me? Yeah. <laughs> gotta look confused uh, at Sephora. Oh my gosh, gotta look. Oh, yeah. yeah oh, yeah. that one TikTok. Oh, no, no, no. There's a lot of variations. There's a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Dating apps isn't working, so I need to start looking confused at Ulta. Yeah. Are you still going to Ulta? Oh, I can. I need to go pick up photos from CBS. Yeah, so I film on TikTok. Uh, why, why? Oh, oh, looking confused at Ulta. I have been the guy who's From confused at Ulta, though. You have? Because yeah. I try to buy Christmas presents for uh, kids in Children's Cincinnati Hospital, and she wanted a straight iron <laughs> or a, a flat iron. I don't know what <laughs> hair it's called. Straightener. No, a hair straightener. No, what? but she called it something iron, and so I uh, thought it was curling iron. iron. No, it wasn't curling. It was like, I think it was okay. called a straight iron. Hold up, hold up. Yeah, I'd be confused by right, that too. Yeah. yeah, and so I like 
I think it was called a straight iron. Well, she like she wrote it. Uh, okay, yeah. Oh. So she wrote straight oh, iron flat or fly iron. iron. Mm. I can't remember. It was either flat iron or straight iron. And so I was just like, oh yeah, to like iron your clothes. No. And then my like girl space friend was like, Andrew, no, you dumbass. She's looking for like something to straighten yeah, her yeah. hair. Like, <laughs> Why would oh. you want an iron? Because I went to. That's hilarious. Yeah, and then I went At to Alta, Alta and I was just like looking around. I was like, I hope I'm I can confused. find an iron. <laughs> yeah. Um, the lady instantly came up to me and started talking to me and asked what I was looking for. It was, I'm, I'm curious, I was what are your like perfect me cues? Because mm. I feel like I used to have one and I experienced it. And then I was like, me cues are overrated. Mm. Dang. I don't yeah. know. I think I'm a fan. Okay. I don't. Mm, I also don't like men approaching me. So it's like kind of hard. Um, <laughs> yeah, I feel difficult. like if it's in a in an environment around other friends so like they're in that group because mm, we have mutual, mutual friends, friends. Yeah, that's, that's okay the best way, yeah yeah but if it's like a stranger i don't want it get it away from me don't talk um to me. yeah unless like we're in a space like enjoying an activity where it's a bunch of strangers i'm thinking of like concert or like Mm. some mm. something where there's a gathering of people that have similar interests i still feel like you don't want to be approaching that setting <sighs> yeah and i yeah. Also, <laughs> as a guy like i also I don't, don't really like want yeah, yeah approaching people in big like in like public events i i think the ideal is through uh for, like a mutual like friend. a house party that's yeah. what i'm thinking yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. That, yeah. Like, there has that... to be mutual friends because then it's like a pre-vetted kind of mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. meeting yeah but aside from that like i think i do like the friends to lovers trope because the idea of like someone oh. likes you for who you are before they're like romantically attracted to you or something mm. i don't know if i'm well i've never been in a situation where that has happened mm. because if i wasn't immediately attracted to you as someone i would see myself dating it that doesn't it's usually flip. change yeah. for me mm. um, do you like immediately pursue someone in that way when you find them like attractive i don't really pursue anyone but um i do have like if i see someone who's attractive i will think in my mind like oh i might like develop a crush on the side or something mm. but i don't think i would actively pursue them unless there was like a if, unless i had so i don't you know i've never like really pursued anyone being before, so friends with oh, okay my way of i think pursuing people is basically being really friendly with them i don't think they would be able to tell that i'm actually trying to <sighs> like just like me yeah. like i feel same. like i would just give off really platonic yeah, friends that's vibes. what i mean by I'm, i guess friends to lovers it's like you get to know them as a person before yeah you i think i would anything. actually prefer that yeah just to even though my intentions may not be just to be friends but like that's I'm better at becoming someone's friend than like pursuing them romantically. Like I, I've never Probably learned how to yeah. do that. Like our parents never taught us yeah, that. Yeah, no. I don't really have any good friends who are good examples of how to do that well. How to or, pick up girls? No, but like I mean, do it in a respectful, masculine. like yeah, 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 genuine manner. Like I haven't, because most people, if you do this, it's in private. So like I don't get to readily observe that, and our parents never taught us that. So what I can do is I'm good at making friends with people but like then it's that misleading yeah then like the message that i actually want to send to the other person doesn't get through until like i actually open up and people i actually think i had this problem like in middle school like, like, like i would open school. up and they'd be like confused and like what you uh, like me? kind of thing oh wow what? interesting yeah i guess i just haven't really liked enough people to do this with or anyone <laughs> But it's really easy when someone is pursuing you or oh, they man. initiate the flirtiness. Yeah. Then it's like yeah. super easy. Then yeah, you just yeah, follow yeah. suit. Yeah. But I've never had to be the one who initiates flirtation. Mm. Yeah. So what was the original question? Me Q? Oh. Your ideal me Q. Oh. I think there's something before that too. Oh, or would Rachel I ever use dating apps? Oh. Dating apps? You oh, said oh, no. Yeah. Because I, I think it's just oh. weird. Like there's no pre-vetting. Yeah, I nowadays like being mm. single i'm scared like you just don't like when you meet a stranger you know nothing you about know them yeah. it's like 
it's scary because as you get to know more and more about them, like it could go one way or the other. Like you could like what you're finding out, but you can also be like, whoa. Isn't that with everyone though? Even though, no, but from it's well, the, the stakes are higher with like romantic relationships, I think. Yeah, but isn't that with even in romantic relationships as well? Not with like mutual friends, because like I mm. feel like you can ask your friend like, "What yeah. is this person like? What do you think about this person?" Yeah, exactly. Yeah, be honest with me, yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, because you generally don't need. Because I. <laughs> you Sorry. also generally uh. don't meet like the other person's environment, like the people that they mm. surround themselves with, and I think I like mm. seeing people in that environment first. In their too. own yeah. environment, yeah. That like, gives a lot of information. Mm-hmm. That's true. Mm-hmm. Wow. Any mutual friend shorties? <laughs> <laughs> mutual friend shorties for yeah. Rachel Cut too. Yeah. Oh, Mid- god. oh god. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah, I don't like that. <laughs> I was like, wait yeah, a second. Cut that out. Cut that uh, out. Yeah, cut that out. <laughs> we don't want to attract that. Uh, no, we don't. Um, I'm open to dating apps because I feel like I think it's safer for guys too. It is definitely yeah. a lot safer, That's and also very true. Um, it's just a good opportunity to like meet people that you wouldn't have otherwise met mm. because like that's a good point w- if you're only dependent on like meeting people through mutual friends like the amount of people yeah. that you could potentially the meet is really people. small yeah. Yeah, yeah. whereas like online like you can meet people that you wouldn't have met otherwise mm-hmm. but that's fair yeah yeah i think like the only reason i would ever be on a dating app is just to have fun entertainment yeah like but i don't never see go myself... on a date just swipe and have oh no, no like maybe even go on oh, dates yeah. just okay. to like like Kicks you said giggles, yeah. learn about other people that mm. i would otherwise never meet and have stories I actually, um i actually think i have met people through dating apps who i think use dating apps to make friends which i think was really weird but like they go on dating apps meet people and like keep it strictly platonic and that's how they make friends. Mm. Mm. I don't know if I like that. I think it's misleading. But you won't have that problem on Coffee Meets Bagel. <laughs> That's true. I don't know. Sometimes, like, actually, no, I've never gone to dating apps to friendship arc. Mm. That's never happened. No. I've I've seen that happen a couple uh, times. Yeah, I was well, like, I've it's seen weird. it happen. I've just never personally experienced it. Oh, okay. Yeah, when, I don't know. I feel like when you introduce people, you're like, oh yeah, this is my friend. We met on a dating app. We met on Bumble. We met on Hinge. <laughs> I think it's a funny conversation starter. I don't think necessarily mm-hmm. I would judge them for that. If mm-hmm. they're like genuine friends. Actually, now. yeah, you're right. You're right. If yeah. they just end up being homies. Have you ever had a love... Okay, it doesn't have to be lover, but like relationship to friendship arc or like romantic to platonic relationship arc? in your life before never a two week two way street either like i had feelings for them they didn't to me and then mm. we just stayed friends or the other way around but if there was never like mutual feelings to friendship arc mm. okay because that would have been dating, dating. and yeah, then breaking up just yeah. settling yeah or just staying friends with your ex yeah. essentially i feel like i have well it wasn't like i think the initial start to my relationship with this person was we were both interested in potentially dating each other Mm, but then as we got to know yeah yeah, as we got to know each other more Mm. i think we both came to the realization that we're better off as just friends Mm. but the initial Mm. interest was i think more oh interesting yeah and you're right you have had this yeah and i think that type of relationship is what's the right word Spicy. Spicy. <laughs> it's like a spicy, spicy friendship. Spicy everything bagel. <laughs> it's a spicy, spicy everything bagel. Friendship. But yeah. no, like when once it was like strict, there was nothing spicy about it afterwards. It was just like we connected really well. And like, I mean, we both started dating other people afterwards mm-hmm. um, and still stayed pretty good friends. Stayed really good friends. Um, but yeah. I think there have been people who have been... Or like have had crushes on me, but then I just avoid until they stop having crushes on me and then we're friends. Mm -hmm. Basically. Yeah, but I don't think it's ever it hasn't 
it usually hasn't been awkward afterwards unless it was from an, a much earlier time in my life. Hmm. That raises a question for me. I think in my youth, I was notoriously bad at dealing with people who liked me, mm -hmm. but I didn't know how to like reject them mm -hmm. in a respectful mm -hmm. way. Mm -hmm. um, and I still don't think I'm, well, I don't think as an adult, you really have to do that as much anymore, but is there like a good way to like turn someone down? Is there a right way or like a proper way to turn someone down? A good old fashioned sit down conversation. Yeah, but yeah. as like when you're young, that's hard. Yeah, you don't have I don't think you can do that because a... I was also yeah. the same. I remember we were all the same. <laughs> Dude, I was the same. I yeah. was gets I would get super uncomfortable. And uncomfortable yeah, and just yeah. Like, just ignore like, and ignore yeah. and avoid. I did the same yeah. thing in like third grade. I was yeah. massively. Third grade. Yeah, I heard a it girl like me in third grade. Yeah. I was just like, oh, I don't. I mean. I just avoided the girl because I was just like, what, what do I do? Cars, yeah. <laughs> Dang, yeah. She was in the OG front of the ghosting. line. I, I went to the back of the line. <laughs> oh, gee, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But like, what can you do when you're 10? Yeah, I mean. Yeah, without being mean and hurting their yeah. feelings. Exactly, because yeah. I, I also didn't want to be very mean sensitive, uh, yeah. and hurt their feelings, even though I like wanted to stop whatever was going on in their mind. Stop that, liking me. You know how like actors the way they cry like on command is like i think you just imagine yourself in a really sad situation mm. and then it triggers immediate tears do you guys have a certain thing that you can imagine on the point on the spot and just start tearing up no i don't cry a lot yeah you do I can't do it i can't cry on command I also sometimes when I'm really sad, I don't cry, but I feel sad. Yeah, that's the worst So I need to induce feeling. crying. So usually I watch a really sad movie that will get me to cry. Yeah, the thing is, the sad experiences or sad memories that make me cry will only make me cry the first couple times. Mm -hmm. And then by like times four or you five. You get desensitized to it. Yeah, I still get sad, but I don't, it's yeah. not to the point of tears yeah. anymore. Because I going off of what Rachel was just saying, I... I remember, oh, I hate how I talk about this so much, but I remember during my breakup, like this time last year, I like felt immense sadness, but I couldn't get myself to cry. Like I was like, I really want to mm. just let it all out, ugly cry and just like yeah. you know, have this Be cathartic yeah. experience, but mm. I couldn't do it. And it was like, I was like forcing myself to cry. I was like almost fake crying in order to like get myself to actually cry. Sad but I like the work. technique of watching yeah. sad movies. Yeah, because then you don't feel bad because you're not crying for yourself either. Yeah. It, it oh, makes it feel like you're crying for something else. Yeah. Like you're just sitting in a space of sadness. Yeah. A lot of Pixar yeah. movies will get that to yeah. me. Yeah. Oh, okay. It cry. happened to me during Everything Everywhere. That movie mm. always gets me. But it takes cry. so long to get to the part where you're going to start crying, though. Yeah, but then it's like, what rush I mean, are you want, in to cry? <laughs> I just want to get it out. And you, you get know? to watch a bomb, bomb movie while That's you're That's true. It. But when Spider I... Man when I, also made me cry. The new oh? one? Yeah. I was crying during it. When? when? Wait, no, spoiler check. Uh, it was uh, when Miles was saying bye to his mom and jumping back in the Spider-Verse universe on top of the water tower. And she was just like, just know we're oh. always here for you. And I was just oh. like, damn, don't do this to me. And then I cry. I don't remember that part. But a one exercise. You remember I've been... this part? Okay, yeah, of I was I just going to say. I don't, I don't know why I don't remember that. Um, I think it's a good exercise to practice crying. Like, I think it's a skill to be able to express your emotion in that way. Some people are naturally good at it. At but crying? I, yeah. Mm. I think crying can be really annoying sometimes, though, because, okay, yes. Maybe I do cry a lot, but I don't cry a lot in the sense of times where I want to cry, right? But I will cry uh, unexpectedly, mm. and it's usually because I'm really frustrated and angry and with other people, and then it comes out, and I lose all of my ethos. I, think, I lose yeah, every you single... You cry at frustration. Bit. No, 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 no. Yes, I cry a lot out of frustration. When I say good crier, I mean people who can control when they cry. Like, they use it almost as a tool to, like... For me, I just want to... No, no, oh. no. As a tool to express your emotion. Because, like, for me, I just wanted to feel sad and then move on with it. And just, like, get the cry out mm. and then move on and 
get on with my day. But like I couldn't get it out, so I just kept sleeping in sadness. It's cry constipation. Yeah, cry, I think I have cry constipation. Constipation. <laughs> um. So what I do now is sometimes, like before I go to sleep, I just like imagine mom and dad dying, and like triggers immediate tears. What the? Huh? F- <laughs> Why would and you, I get so sad. Why would you want to like put that negative energy out into the universe? I'm not putting it out in the universe. It's almost I'm just, like manifestation if you're thinking no, about no, it no, this no, no, often. No. Good no, lord. No, I don't do it that. I think it's when I'm in like a sad space and like. This is really interesting because I, I thought about that. I'd just be more sad. <laughs> yeah. I no, just but then it awful. gets the cry out and I'm like. But then I'd be left with, oh my God, I'm not going to see mom then, and dad for no, so much longer. And no, all the times it's that I have is. afterwards because I'm like, wow, they're still alive. <laughs> interesting. This is a strange one. I'm going to leave you yeah, at that. But I I like, if it works for strange. you, it works for yeah. you. I don't do it intentionally, but sometimes. Like I'll be in bed, and that's just where my mind will go. Just I just sad. play out death. sad s- scenarios. Yeah, you guys don't think about death. No, you think about death all. T- I think about mm. life after mom and dad passes all the time, and it's really that's sad. too scary for me. I don't like. It's like that's a reality we'll have to face bliss. in the in future. Like Forty years. <laughs> yeah, it's so far away. It's yeah, so but weird. it's still like I, I want to be mentally prepared when that does. You want to desensitize yourself to it now. Like, I know it's going to be painful no matter what. I guess this is really weird. These are like the inner workings of my yeah, mind. You're really exposed. Sure, sure. You're six six away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exposed but, away. But like, I'm thinking about like, how will I be able to be myself without like the foundational people that are in my life? And it's a very scary thought. It's mo- more of an exercise of thinking about human mortality because we're culturally in a space where human mortality is often ignored and we fear Mm. it whereas in certain cultures Mm. mortality is it's not taboo and it's like almost sometimes it's even celebrated so like the idea surrounding mortality i'm trying to like almost train my brain to think about mortality more regularly and being desensitized to it sounds like kind of um you're decent you're like kind of like a heartless yeah apathetic apathetic well not the word but okay keep on going in any case i do think it is healthy to like think about mortality and like think about this is something that will happen and like we have to be prepared to you know like respond to it because like i think when deaths happen sometimes people aren't prepared for how to process it yeah. Um, and it's, I think it's a really scary thing because I'm, I'm scared of death. Like, Has mom had this conversation with you where she was like, oh, like when I die at my funeral, all of you guys should be celebrating and be happy because I've moved on to like heaven. heaven yeah. Like, so I, I think about that a lot because I've talked to mom about this. Uh, I don't know why, but that is a memory in my head of mom yeah, talking we, to me about I, this. Yeah, I've had that conversation, but like yeah. that is based on the assumption that we believe genuinely that she has... But I genuinely and believe that she again. genuinely believes that. Yeah, but I'm thinking about it from my own perspective of like, because when she's dead, like her perspective doesn't exist anymore. So like, it's only you living with your perspective. And like, actually, no, I do believe in an afterlife. I think oh, I do, do too. I, I willingly I like gaslight myself yeah. to believe. Actually, maybe not. I, I think, think that's okay, almost so a coping mechanism. Is, it is okay, but here's the thing: like, no it's one like, knows. I'm gonna see them again, kind of. So, like, if you're, co- I, not I even have that you'll see them again. It's just that, like, I know she's at peace. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Just knowing at that, peace yeah. is fine. Because, like, you don't. Okay. The, here's my thoughts on mortality in the afterlife. Nobody knows what happens when you die, right? Yes. So why not just believe that mm. there's something? There's better. nothing to lose. Finally. Schrodinger's cat. Like, yeah, yeah sure. doesn't. Wait, because I, if you're, because I have friends, I believe in whatever brings me the most comfort. Mm. And that's me choosing to believe that there's an afterlife. And no one can tell me that I'm wrong. Yeah, Uh, because they don't know. And if someone says like, well, nothing matters, like we die and then everything ceases to exist. And if that brings you comfort, I'm like, that's good for you. I don't want to believe. That's scary to me. Yeah, that's scary to me. Some people really like that and that brings them comfort, Mm. which is also really interesting. But what brings me the most comfort is that 
I don't know what the afterlife entails, if there is one really, but I'm just gonna say that there is in my mind just to bring myself comfort. Interesting perspective, because to me that almost feels like you're being avoidant of death. Because one thing that I hate doing, or I'm very bad at doing, is saying goodbye to people. Like it's just、oh, I'm very bad. Me too. Saying goodbye because、yeah. like I don't know how to make a hard cut off on like being away from someone's presence. So like the way I get over that is like, oh, I'll see you again. Like we'll see each other soon. We'll make plans, even though we don't have exact plans. But like with death, like you're never gonna see that person again, and that lingering feeling of missing them just. Is a little overwhelming. So I think for you, like knowing that there's an after, or thinking that there will be an after, choosing、afterlife. to think that there's choosing an after. to think. Yeah. But I also I、kind、really like, like. Oh, I will see them again. Yeah. The perspective of like they live through people. Like even though their physical presence is gone,、mm-hmm. like they have、wow. disseminated too, yeah, their、that. presence through so many people.、Oh, they、yeah. have like impacted so many people that they continue living. Oh wow, that's、You're, deep. You die twice. That's deep. First, when you die, and. Second when time when you, know you die, forget who you or、oh. you're. The last time your name is spoken, damn.、Mm. Yeah, I don't know what that's from. I think it's from a movie. <laughs> that's crazy. Dang, the second death is even scarier in that case. But you're not there to experience. I don't know. Yeah. yeah, I. But the thought of it is scary. That like, you're gonna be some, forgotten. Like at some point, like the world will just forget that I ever existed. But that's true for everyone. So you know what、like, I do th- think about a lot. I really want to. Well, this is getting really morbid, but I really want to die in sunlight. I don't know, like、Vampire? I want my <laughs> I want my last memory to be like、of、on the a, sun. I don't want it to be like in the dark at night.、Mm. I want the last existing memory that I to have to be as happy be, and like, peaceful and joyful. As, yeah, yeah. That's uh. I think I also I can, would like. Can、that. I control that? Yeah, of course you can. You can tell people who are、Euthanasia. taking care of you. Yeah, it's go to Alaska during the summer, and it's twenty-one hours. Increase my odds. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. <laughs>、uh, like, just hold out. I think there is a level of control that you have yeah, over when you die. Yeah, because some people just like, you know, like at some point once they're satisfied with everything, they just give up. Yeah. Um. Interesting thought. Wow, wow, this conversation、funny. took a turn. Yeah.、Uh, wow. Contemplating mortality. Mortality is, I th- yeah, like I said, it's not talked about enough. I do、yeah. think that it is healthy to think about mortality and how all the friends and family around you are. But it also helps you like appreciate the moments that you have with them more. When, because I actually think when I do, I don't purposely do these exercises, but like when I think about like mom and dad passing away. Like it just makes me so much more grateful for the times I do get with them now, and helps me be more active about like seeing them more and like spending more time with them. Because usually after I have these thoughts, I like call mom and、I'd、be like, "Wow, like I still get to like talk to you. I still get to like spend time with you. Like there、mm-hmm. will be a day where I won't be able to do that, and I really just appreciate that I am still able to do、mm-hmm. that today." Yeah. I think that's also one of the reasons why I'm glad that I ended up spending undergrad in Ohio、mm-hmm. because I、mm-hmm. realized like this is my last year that I'm probably going to be close to mom and dad for、mm-hmm. the foreseeable future, which is sad. Yeah. So. Yeah, I get to see mom and dad a lot. Yeah. Nice. For the next four years.、Yeah. I、that's、fly back a lot. I'm coming back again next month. <laughs> that's true. You are. On that heavy note. We are going to sign out from this podcast and wrap it up. Unless you guys have final thoughts. Yeah, I'm trying to think of how to end this on a happy thought. I don't know. I I don't know why. Like, spend time right now.、Know. Death isn't like really jarring and scary. I、me. don't think we've ever experienced. Yeah. Not, uh, like yeah. none of us have experienced a really close death. But like, and like which we're lucky、mm-hmm. for. Yeah. I don't know. I'm I, right now. I'm just like the natural cycle of how the world moves. Like once our parents pass away, we're gonna have our kids, and then I can like talk to them about how great their yeah and nine nine was.、Uh-huh. And like it's just wheel spinning. It is the circle of life. Yeah, I, I don't know how to. No, my takeaway is a, just like spend time with the people、yeah. that you love、yeah. because you will one day not be able to do that. So. Um, 
cherish the moments that you have and actively plan for more moments in the future. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good takeaway. All right. Thank you, everyone, for joining us on this week's episode of the Rooftop Pod. Um, it'll be a while before the three of us record another podcast together. Not that long. It's in like person. in two weeks. Yeah. Two Didn't weeks. Oh, pick up Rachel. my bad. When uh, you guys are here packing for. Oh, true. It's it's you up. time, yeah. Ooh. All right. A little true, teaser to the true, podcast. True, true. A little, little teaser. You know, project, project N is. Project N. <laughs> Project is N-O. ramping up in next no. month. You'll you'll hear about it <laughs> on the next pod. No. All right. Well, uh, thank you guys again for joining us on this week's episode of the Rooftop Pod. I'm your host Jesse, and signing out with me is my sister Rachel and my brother Andrew. And we will catch you on the next episode of the Rooftop Pod. Peace. Peace.